What's up, boys and girls? Check it out. We're going to do an example on a crane. Specifically, we're going to find the maximum crane load that we can have on this cantilever beam shown. Okay, so we're finding the maximum safe load P. And when we hear maximum safe load, that should make us think ultimate limit state. All right, so ULS. We're going to be using A23.3, the Canadian Concrete Code. It's similar to ACI 318. Okay, so let's dive into this example right here. All right, so first let's look at the shear capacity of this beam, and then we'll move on to flexure. So while we look at shear, we're going to be using the simplified method from clause 11.3.6. Okay, and with shear, our total resistance is the sum of our concrete and our steel resistances. All right, and the concrete resistance, I'm going to show the formula right here. It's a pretty simple formula, but we need to find some of these components, specifically the effective shear depth, dV, and then we'll need to find beta. And beta we're going to get from clause 11.3.6, along with the theta value that we'll use in the VS calculation. Okay, so this is the beta value for you when there is stirrups, and we see in our drawing we have 10 amp stirrups at 250 millimeters on center. All right, so we'll just plug everything into the VC equation, and you can see that the shear is resisted by the web of the concrete, so we use BW. In our case, we don't have a T-beam or anything, so that's just B. So we find that our VC contribution gives us 92.6 kilo kilonewtons of shear resistance. Moving on to our VR equation here, we have a few other parameters. So we got the theta that we got from clause 11.3.6, which is the crack angle. We also need AV, which is the shear reinforcement area. So that's going to be two times our stirrup diameter, which in this case we're using 10 m bar, so that's going to be 200 millimeters squared. And then in the, in the denominator there we got S, our spacing, at 250. So we'll plug all this in and we find that our shear resistance from the steel is 187 kilonewtons because of these 10 m stirrups at 250 on center. All right, so at this point, we have our VR. We have our resistance of our section. We can sum these together. It's 279.6 kilonewtons. So we have to back figure what the load P is, all right? We've got to take out the dead load from that, and we also have to consider the factored load because we're determining the maximum safe load. That means we need load factors, these alpha values, all right? So I've written down the equation here. VR equals VF. We're setting them equal to each other. And we have to consider that VF is alpha dead, V dead, plus alpha live, V live. So I've gone ahead and solved for the dead load, which is just taking into account the cross-sectional area. And I'm using 23.5 kilonewtons per meter cubed as a unit weight of concrete. So using the typical load combination of 1.25 dead plus 1.5 live, we can solve for PL, the crane load, at 181.1 kilonewtons. So this is the maximum permissible safe load for shear, all right? And now we're gonna go and do it for flexure and compare the two values. All right, now it's time to analyze this doubly reinforced beam in flexure, okay? So this is under a negative moment, so our primary steel is at the top, our tension steel. And we're gonna go ahead and assume that the, the tension steel and the compression steel are both yielding. And this allows us to use equilibrium to solve for A pretty quickly, and then we can verify our assumption, all right? All right, so recall that A is the depth of our stress block, right? So it's part of the uh, resultant concrete force, right? And so we can use all three resultants, the two resultants from the steel layer and the other components of the concrete resultant force to solve for A. And that's what we're doing right here, of course, assuming the steel yields. And in the end, we get a depth for our concrete stress block of 158.8 millimeters. All right, so it's time to see if that is a real value or not. We have to check if these equations are valid, if our steel is actually yielding in both layers. Okay, so to do so, we'll use similar triangles. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn the strain diagram that will result in this beam. And, and that allows us to see how we get these equations for our similar triangles. So we don't need to remember these equations. We can normally just derive them right on the spot when we need to get the strain at a particular layer, okay? So take a look at that figure down there and just dwell on it for a minute or two. 
until you can make sense of it. Of course, the strain is a straight line because we're saying that plane sections remain plane. All right, so because our assumption of, of the steel yielding in both layers is validated, we can go ahead and compute the force in each of these two steel layers, and that will allow us to compute MR, and then we can find a P and compare it to the value limited for the shear, okay? So MR is just these forces times their moment arms, and we're gonna sum moments about the concrete resultant CR, just so that we don't have to actually compute the concrete resultant, all right? We get to choose one that we don't have to compute the resultant for, okay? So we find our MR to be 437.7 kilonewton meters, that is, kilonewton meters, all right? And so we'll back calculate out the dead portion just like we did for shear. So I've calculated the dead load moment due to the 23.5 kilonewton per meter cube self weight, and I've calculated that to be 4.76 kilonewton meters, all right? So if we take that out, we have to use our alpha dead and alpha live load factors again and we find ml to be 287.8 kilonewton meters for a p live for flexure of 191.9 kilonewtons now that is greater than p live for shear which was 181 kilonewtons all right so shear governs this example and the total safe crane load is 181.1 kilonewtons all right that's it thanks for tuning in see y'all next time